On today's Locked on Jayhawks, we are previewing Kansas versus Texas Tech as the Jayhawks look to improve on their 7-2 and record and win their third consecutive game. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked On Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcast. Also free and available on YouTube where you can like and subscribe to our show. We're going to get into our Kansas Texas Tech preview on today's episode of the show. Before we do that, we are brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at Jace Medical. That's dot com. That's J A S E Medical dot com. <clears throat> okay, so uh, KU Texas Tech on the ledger Saturday, 11 a.m. Uh, pregame is going to start at 9.30 on KLWN and 105.9 KISS. Tech has uh, kind of dominated the series here. 22-2 to two is the overall. Now, uh, it's funny. Whenever you talk about Kansas and series with some of the other teams, you know, obviously a lot of the other teams have uh, the, the win total on them when, you, when you're talking about, you know, Texas Tech or Texas or Baylor or whatever these are, right? Um Though over the last, you know, five or six years, Kansas has played a lot of close games with Tech. You think to the game, well, there was last year, ended up being a 15-point game, but game that felt closer to being a one-score game. You know, Jason Bean gets kind of knocked out at the end. Uh, you go back to the game a couple of years ago in 2020 when Kansas didn't have a single win and they nearly won in Lubbock. You go to 2019 when they got the win. So there have been some close games in this series. But overall, Tech is dominating this year. 22 to 2 at this point in time. KU won in 2019, 37 to 34, and they won in 2001, 34 to 31. So, what that means is that as you're coming into this game and you're looking on FanDuel or, or whatever, and KU has given up three and a half, four points, KU has never beaten Texas Tech by more than three points in program history. So, for them to cover the spread, means that they would have to have their biggest win ever against Texas Tech football. Uh, but Tech won last time they were in Lawrence 41-14. to That was homecoming for KU, and uh, that did not go well for the Jayhawks, to say the least. That game was probably worse than the score indicated at 41-14. to uh, Jason Bean went just 11-21 of for 80 yards in that game. Uh, last season, a lot closer, 43 to 28 in Lubbock. Bean was great in that game, 17 of 28 for 270 yards with four total touchdowns. Uh, so you hope you get kind of the second guy more than the first, though you hope doesn't get knocked out because you had to go to Ethan Vasco and that, who, by the way, looked really good for Coastal Carolina last week. Anyway, uh, storylines in this game, Big 12 title race. KU has to win out if you want to have a chance to make the Big 12 title. There's uh, seven teams who are within one game. Texas and Oklahoma State are sitting at five and one in conference play. Five other teams, with the inclusion of Kansas, are sitting at four and two in conference play. I guess technically Texas Tech, you know, they're going, hey, we're three and three. If we went out and get to six and three to win out, we'd have to beat Kansas and Texas. Maybe there'd be some funky scenario where there'd be like a four way tie at six and three for second in the Big 12, and we could, I don't know. Uh, but the Big 12 title race is certainly on the conversation. And, you know, I, I think this kind of goes into this conversation, but it's a different storyline. Trying not to look ahead. You know, you have Kansas State next week. That's going to be a, a monumental game for KU, trying to end the, the losing streak to their in-state rival. And trying not to look ahead and trying to stay focused on this game. Because, again, to win the Big 12 title or to make the Big 12 title, you're going to have to win out the rest of your three games. And you have to focus on each and every one of those as kind of part of that. Uh, beyond that, though, like, even there is a scenario, if you win your final three games, if you're Kansas, maybe you don't make the Big 12 title. Maybe things don't work out. Maybe Oklahoma State, Texas don't lose twice. Or, or you know, your tiebreaker scenario doesn't happen that you need to have happen. If Kansas wins your final three games, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to be playing for the Big 12 title or you're probably going to be in a New Year's Six Bowl. Because in the new New Year's Six, there is not the BCS old where it's you can only have two teams in. You can have as many as you want. And if your 
ranked 16th right now and you get three more wins, including one against the top 25 Kansas State team, I kind of feel like Kansas would be ranked in the top 11. They take the top 12, but then they'll take the uh, you know group of five best teams. So realistically, if you're top 11, you're going to make a New Year's Six Bowl in the new format of things. So win your final three games, and one of two things will probably happen, Big 12 title race or uh, New Year's Six Bowl. But that's a long way to go, and this is a tough game before you even get to your toughest game next week with Kansas State. Uh, Jason Bean, the rest of the season, is that a storyline that's starting to emerge this week? Jalen Daniels didn't you know, uh, go with the team last week. Uh, he didn't practice on Monday. Um, I don't think you just throw him in cold against Kansas State. It's going to be tough to throw him in cold if if you were doing that on senior day at Cincinnati, road game, final week of the season. At that point, Jason Bean would have established more momentum. I guess it depends on you know your game results these next two weeks that would make you more or less likely to feel good about throwing him in there. Uh, and then at that point, if Jason Bean's been your starter through the rest of the regular season, are you really not going to be like, hey, we know this is your last game ever as a uh, senior. You're not going to start the bowl game. So I, I kind of wonder if it's just going to be Jason Bean the rest of the way and you reset things with Jalen Daniels. Now, I will say, I think I, I thought I saw that they're going to do the same rule they did last year about, you know, uh, you can play in the bowl game and it doesn't count your red shirt and if that were the case that would mean Jalen Daniels could play one regular season game and the bowl game and still use a red shirt coming into next year if that were a thing but at this point in time though especially the way Jason Bean played last week against Iowa State I think he's got a chance to just be the guy the rest of the season for you and uh, if he plays like he did last week or in the key moments against Oklahoma uh, on the last drive on, on that fourth down then you're going to be okay with that uh, the, the other storyline here is from a Texas Tech perspective Tech is trying to stay alive for bowl eligibility they're sitting at four and five, so they can afford one more loss in route to getting there. I guess technically they could lose to get in at five and seven if there's not enough bowl or uh, eligible teams. But they finish at Texas, which means that most likely they're going to lose their final game. So they are desperate. They need to win these two games before, including at Kansas, to try to get to bowl eligibility. So you're playing a talented team, a team that I think is more talented than the record shows, who's desperate, and that makes for a really tough competition when you're going at it if you're Kansas. Now, as far as the Texas Tech scouting report, they're four and five, like I said, better than the record, I think, indicates. Uh, we'll get into why here in a second. They're three and three in the Big 12. But like, here's one example. On ESPN SB Plus, they are 35th in the country. So the reason they're much better than their record indicates, they have a lot of talent on the roster, at times maybe undisciplined, at times injuries, at times close, weird things have happened, fluky losses, turnovers have been a big story of their season. Um, they had an overtime loss to Wyoming, a game that they probably won and, and you know, blew kind of a late lead. And Wyoming's a good football team too, so, you know, the, the, there's no shame in that loss. But that would easily make them 5-4, and four, which, you know, winning record just looks different. Um, they only lost by one score to Oregon, and Oregon looks like one of the best teams in the country. I know they're ranked, what, sixth in the college football playoff rankings, but uh, you look at some like certain power ratings that that view for like betting lines, and they would be like number three in, in terms of some of that. So then you have a one-score loss to West Virginia. On top of it, you've had to deal with injuries to the quarterback. Tyler Shuck goes out early in the season. Baron Morton goes out at one point in the season. Then you're on your third string. You're struggling. You're struggling with turnovers throughout the year, turnover margin. And uh, Baron Morton comes back last week and he beat TCU. So they're better than the four and five record. Don't be fooled by that. This is a very talented team. Offensively, they're number 28 on ESPN SB+. They're eighth in the Big 12 at 30.6 points per game. Only 10th in yards per game, 11th in yards per play. But again, the number's better when Baron Morton and or Tyler Shuck are in there. And Morton's uh, playing this week because he was back last week against TCU. High, high tempo. They're one of the, the fastest running teams in the country. So Oklahoma, UCF, they're, they're actually much faster than, than UCF in terms of plays per game. But um, you were able to do well against Oklahoma. Uh, we'll see how you can do in this one. They have one of the best running backs in the country in Taj Brooks. Baron Morton is the quarterback who played well last week. And they've been excellent at protecting the quarterback despite injuries. Number 21 in pro football focus and pass block grade. Run block grade is 41st for what it's worth. Uh, they have been turnover prone, prone, 12 interceptions thrown. That's second most in the Big 12. But Baron Morton has only thrown two of those. So it's it's more so been kind of the other guys. Defensively, Texas Tech is 53rd on ESPN SB+. But for my money, I, I can almost argue the defense is better than the offense. So they're 25.7 points allowed per game. That's eighth in the Big 12. So they're also eighth in points per game. But they're all, they're fifth in the Big 12 in yards allowed per game. 
uh, fourth in yards allowed per play. So this has actually been a pretty good tech defense that has just been hurt by the turnover margin from the offense. They're a good tackling unit once they get there. Don't always take the best angles. Not a great pass rush or coverage unit, but not horrible at either. Just kind of below average nationally if you're looking at pro football focus. Uh, but overall, this has been a good defense. It's just been hurt by those poor turnovers. And then add to it, they are number 21 in the country on ESPN SB+. In special teams, they are the only team in the Big 12 to have a kick return and a punt return for a touchdown this year. So you got to fix your special teams mistakes because that's been kind of biting KU these last uh, three weeks or so, or last three games. Uh, we're going to continue on with our matchups of the game. First, this episode of the show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. I bet you college football and basketball coaches wish they had that with the transfer portal. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Matchups of the game. We'll get to our team matchups and then a player matchup. Then we'll get to our Hawks to soar players to watch here. By the way, if you're looking for it uh, for the KU Manhattan game that's later tonight with basketball, we did a KU Manhattan preview yesterday's episode. So find that anywhere you get your podcast or uh, on our YouTube page. So first down for a matchup here, establishing the run. And, and this goes for both teams. Taj Brooks for Texas Tech has 1,033 rushing yards on 5.4 yards per carry. He's been one of the best running backs in the country at breaking tackles, too. We've seen some games where KU's done really well tackling. We've seen some games where KU's had problems tackling. Um, that's the recipe for Tech winning this game. KU struggles tackling. Taj Brooks goes for 150, 200 yards, and maybe you're, you're minus one in the turnover battle or something like that, or you have a special teams mistake, and Tech comes in and wins the game. So can you slow him down a little bit and hold him to 90 yards rushing. You know what I mean? Hold him to 85 yards rushing. That would be a really good day for the KU defense. So he's really good. Meanwhile, for KU, they have really good backs of their own. Devin Neal and Daniel Highshaw have a combined 1,345 rushing yards on six yards per carry. So they've obviously been really good. Um, KU's defense, we know, has been hit or miss with the run game. BYU was great against them. But they don't have a great running game. Iowa State, they were great against them. Iowa State doesn't have a great running game either. Uh, but against Oklahoma – against UCF, against Texas, Oklahoma State, you gave up 200-plus rushing yards to all these teams. So what is it going to be this week against Texas Tech? KU is 10-0 under Lance Leipold when they give up 4.5 yards per carry or less since the 2022 season. They're 3-9 and nine when not. Can you hold Texas Tech down to just an average day kind of running the football here? Now, Tech's defense defending the run, meanwhile, has been solid. Um, KU's had their struggles. Um, against Iowa State, I guess, running the football, against Oklahoma State running the football. I think their defense is a little bit different than what Texas Tech does. So it seems like KU's more struggled with the teams who play a bunch of safeties and have a bunch of speed out there to, to get to everything. Uh, K-State did have some success on Texas Tech running the ball. So maybe there's something you can look at there. Um, Wildcats had 272 rushing yards, 5.8 yards per carry. So you know, maybe you can replicate some of that. No one else has been above 171 rushing yards, though. BYU, who we did mention, KU shut down and hasn't been a great running team this year, did get to five yards per carry, though, even though it wasn't a huge total. It was a good, you know, average. Houston averaged 4.5 yards per carry. So uh, there is a couple games you can point to and be like, yeah, they've had some rushing success. And in the case of like Houston and BYU, you wouldn't say either of those teams are nearly as good rushing the football as Kansas is. So there is an avenue there where both teams can kind of get the ball running who can kind of slow it down a little better. Second down is red zone play. This is actually a matchup of the two worst red zone defenses in the Big 12 right now. Texas Tech is 13th in the Big 12 in red zone defense. Teams have scored 29 of 32 trips. Uh, Kansas is 14th in the Big 12 in red zone defense. Teams have scored on 36 of 37 trips inside the red zone. Now, specifically for touchdowns, 
Uh, opponents have scored 20 of 32 times on tech with touchdowns. So that's a really good percentage too. If you're scoring, you know, in the 60% touchdowns in the red zone, that's a good mark to be at. Meanwhile, against Kansas teams have scored touchdowns on 25 of their 37 trips also in the mid sixties against Kansas. Uh, but offensively KU has the fourth most red zone touchdowns and Texas tech has the fifth most red zone touchdowns. So, uh, KU has missed two field goals in those situations. Tech has not, uh, which makes them, I guess, slightly more efficient overall in the aftermath. But um, both teams have struggled red zone defensively, which means if they can play above their, you know, their on paper number, I guess, if you make one red zone stop in a game that maybe you're not expecting that to happen, that can be the difference maker. Third down is just discipline. Uh, I think turnovers can qualify as discipline sometimes and how we approach it with football. Obviously, penalties can dumb mistakes i think at times your tech's been a really talented team i think the talent level between tech and, and kansas is pretty close but there have been times where maybe they've been undisciplined or had too many turnovers uh tech has uh really had issues with the interceptions though again morton hasn't been at fault for all of them ku has done a good job getting interceptions and getting defensive touchdowns tech also hasn't forced a ton of turnovers here now for kansas they're 10 and 2 when they have zero or one turnover, so one or less turnover, they're 10 and two under Lance Leipold since 2022. So last season and this year, the two losses, both to Texas, oddly enough, uh, but they're three and seven when they have two or more turnovers, turn the ball over one or less times, you have a much better chance to win. Uh, but KU, in my opinion, is the better team here. I don't think it's like resoundingly, but I do think kids is the better team. So if you play the more clean game, then the better team should win, right? Uh, Tech is 12th in the Big 12 in penalty yards per game. So they're bottom three there. KU's in the top five in terms of avoiding the most penalties. So Tech's averaging over 55 penalty yards per game. KU is closer to 40. So stay disciplined, avoid turnovers, don't do stupid stuff, avoid penalties, play clean, and you win the game. Fourth down here is the KU defense on fourth down. Tech has tried 30 fourth downs this year. That is second in the Big 12, only to Baylor, who has 32. It's not just that Tech is aggressive and has gone for a lot of fourth downs with 30 of them. Basically, that's like three per game. They've also converted them at an insane clip. They've done 20 of 30 on fourth down, so 67%. So they try it the second most. They also convert it at the second highest percentage as well. Against Kansas defense, teams are 7 of 14 on fourth downs. So that's about middle of the pack, below middle of the pack, slightly in the Big 12 at 50%. You're going to have to probably stop a couple fourth and shorts in this game or at least attempt to. But Brian Borland, the defense coordinator for KU, talked about this earlier this week. The best way to avoid trying to have to deal with those fourth and shorts is to get them in fourth and eight, to get them in fourth and ten, to have them in third and long where they're not viewing it as, hey, it's third and four. We could run for three yards here, and if we don't get it, we go for it on fourth down. Get them in third and fourth and longs. And then you don't even have to worry about this. But realistically, Tech is going to be trying to convert a couple fourth downs. How do you do on those plays? Uh, obviously, you don't expect to, to completely shut them out. But avoid a game where they're four for four on fourth downs, right? Make it so they're two of four on fourth downs or something, right? Uh, our player matchup here is the KU healthy defensive tackles against Taj Brooks. So we already talked about Brooks, who's been outstanding for Texas Tech, looking like an all-Big 12, all-American type running back so far this year for the Red Raiders. Specifically, when you look at where he has had a lot of success running the football, he is averaging seven yards per carry between center and right guard, which means he is averaging seven yards per carry running straight up the gut. And that's one of his best totals of the year. So KU defensive tackles have to do a good job plugging the run in the middle. Well, KU's defense tackles are banged up right now. Tommy Dunn was hurt, didn't play last week. Devin Phillips was hurt, only played four snaps last week. You saw DJ Withers play 41 snaps last week. Gage Keys was at 30. Uh, Caleb Taylor was at 26. Really impressed with what Caleb Taylor did. We saw some flash plays from Gage Keys. That big hit of the quarterback ended up being roughing the passer. But, uh, you know, DJ Withers, I, I think, continues to uh, have an arrow pointed up in, in terms of his KU career and everything. So KU defensive tackles have to be on their game, especially since they might be being asked to play bigger snap counts than maybe they had a couple weeks ago. Uh, against a good Texas Tech running offense. Are right, we going to continue on with our Jayhawks to uh, watch, Hawks to soar in this one? First, we are brought to you by Jace Medical. Whether you're on extended travel, 
bracing for a major weather event or limited by supply sh- shortage, you are covered. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical. They have life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply, even ED generics for Cialis, Viagra, and Revatio prescriptions. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code Locked On at checkout for a discount as well. One verified customer said this about Jace. I'm thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered a biotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than normal farm than the low the lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would like to get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily medication, go to jacemedical.com to see if if uh, it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase. Hawks to soar players to watch for KU football offensively. I'm going to go with Lawrence Arnold. Um, so four catches for 110 yards last year against Texas tech. He had a good game. Now for what it's worth, Devin Neal went off against Texas tech last year. He had almost 200 rushing yards. The KU tight ends went off. Mason Fairchild had like five catches for around 50 yards. Jared Casey had the big catch on the fourth down where he just broke free. So those would be players that I'm kind of watching in this one too. Um, but when I look at Texas tech's defense, so they have been, uh, one of the, better defenses in terms of yards allowed per pass in the big 12, but they've been one of the worst defenses in the big 12 in completion percentage against. So what does that tell you? Teams are completing passes against them, but they're not going for a lot of yards. That tells you that they're doing a good job limiting explosive plays, limiting big plays in the passing game. And when I think of Jason Dean's style and what KU has really thrived on in the passing game, I mean, KU is number one in the big 12 in yards per pass because they hit big plays. They hit home run balls. Okay, so maybe they're going to take some of that away. Well, Lawrence Arnold can hit the big play, but he's also a really good intermediate player. And we've seen him have a good connection with Jason Bean so far. Um, Tech is also defensively 98th in the country on third and fourth down success rate. So on key plays, they have given up some stuff. And who have we seen Jason Bean go to on key plays? Lawrence Arnold. Um, Let's see, defensively, I'm going to go with Kobe Bryant. Um, He hasn't really been tested. Five targets against him over the last three games only 13 yards allowed I don't know what the status of Melo Dotson is going to be I think Melo will be back for this week <clears throat> but I wonder if after back-to-back weeks of Melo Dotson having to pick six if teams finally say okay maybe we should go back to just you know not trying to avoid him and if we have to throw it in we have to throw it in I wonder if he finally gets a test where he does you know get three or four targets his way as opposed to like one or two every week that we've kind of seen recently and if so Tech has thrown 12 picks Second most in the Big 12, big chance for Kobe Bryant to maybe grab one, big chance for Kobe Bryant maybe to house one. Now, maybe he doesn't get tested again, and maybe it continues that way. He was excellent against Texas Tech in Lubbock last year, too. Um, so maybe they're just like, nope, we're not going at him either. Uh, but either way, that would still have an impact on the game because then you basically have an island out there with uh, Kobe Bryant. So those are my players to watch in this one. And uh, that's our KU football preview against Texas Tech. Again, you can find our Manhattan preview for KU. Manhattan, anywhere you hear your podcast and with our show as well, which you can find, like, and subscribe on our YouTube page. We'll see you next time with Locked on Jayhawks.